Okay, so this is the next episode of the Complete Podcast. Um, my name is Chris Myers, uh, Clinical Director at Complete Physio, and I'm very pleased to say that we've been joined by somebody that I've known for a very long time, Mr. Sam Singh. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for uh, having me. No problem. And Sam's been um, operating on feet and ankles for uh, 16 years as a consultant. Right. And then another probably five years as a trainee and then a fellow as well. Cool. So a long time. Yeah. So we've been working together for, for many years um, and we've seen lots of mutual patients. And the reason we thought we'd get you on today, Sam, is because we've been having lots of conversations and WhatsApp messages about Achilles ruptures. Yeah. And I think it's very important. I mean, uh, the thing about the Achilles tendon is the rupture rate has gone up. So yeah. if you look at the data and you look for example, the incidence of ruptures in the 1970s, a substantial increase now. And, and it's shocking how much it's gone up. And, and we see it, I think basically the reason is that people are doing more competitive sports at a later age. Yeah. Okay, so the big trends that we've seen, even I've seen in my own career over 20 years, uh, uh, from if I count my registrar and my uh, consultant time is, uh, I'm seeing them in very much younger patients. So sometimes shockingly young patients yeah, in their twenties. Yeah. You've seen, you know, well, look seeing... at Premiership football in the last yeah. two years. There's been a 22-year-old that's ruptured. There's been lots of even and the prevalence never, and elite we is going up. Yeah. We never see them in that age. Why is that? And I think I think it's to do with the, the nature of the training yeah. and the the level of their competing at. Remember, I mean, the amount of force they're putting through that Achilles. They're just the, the the fitness levels are different. Yeah. The amount they're pushing it is different. There's also a link, I think, genetically as well. Yeah. There seems to be quite a few ruptures in Afro-Caribbean players yes. from certain areas. Um, so I think there is a genetic link. Yep. We know sometimes that tendon problems, well, first of all, as you say, age is the biggest risk factor, isn't it, of getting a tendon problem? Yeah. And if people are doing exercise till they're older now, then that, maybe that's... that's, that's but also not just exercise, because I mean, people are doing are doing a lot more yeah, yeah. at a later age than they used to. So yeah, if you yeah. look at... If you look at... Including yourself? Uh, uh, a little bit more. <laughs> not as much as I should, is the answer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, Chris. No, uh, you're absolutely correct, though. The one thing is, look, we do, um, you, you know, you see people push themselves hard. So you see yeah. people playing football quite happily on Clapham Common yeah, yeah. Uh, when they're in their 50s. Yeah. Okay? yeah. And you, would, you wouldn't see that no, no. before people hang their boots up there when they're 34 years old. Yeah, yeah. So you're seeing people doing the kind of sports where you have a problem. Yeah, Racket yeah. sports, football. Yeah. You don't get it from running. You don't get it from running. You don't get no, it that's true. from running. No, no. You don't get it from doing the park run, okay? Because you're not doing that sudden bounce, that sudden explosive force. That sudden yeah. sort of step back, step back. eccentric activity. Exactly. And then, yeah. Well, you're sitting there, you know, I mean, the chap I met yesterday, veterans, football, like, yeah, I'm yeah. playing, I'm in goal. Yeah. So, I'm mean, not, but he's still playing. You yeah. know, he's 53 or 54 years old. Yeah. Probably the kidney stand. And, and, but at the same time, the benefits of the exercise to the general population is massively outweigh the risks, don't absolutely. they? So. But there is a distinct chance, just like, you know, I say people might get plantar fasciitis one time in their life. Yeah. There is a good chance that, you know, yeah. either, either me and you one day might yeah. rupture Achilles. And, and the problem happen. the problem with Achilles ruptures is that there's, there's often not that warning sign. Yes. And so I always find it amazing and people find it amazing that actually you're just as likely, if not more likely, to have an Achilles rupture if you've never had pain Absolutely. in your Achilles before. Yeah, and and, and then we, we always ask, have you had a bad Achilles? Have you uh, got a, a, a degenerate Achilles? Yeah. And, and and one of the other myths I'll, I think I could answer for you while I'm here yeah. is just because you have a really fat, ugly Achilles tendon when, when you see your physio and he goes, wow, that's a bit swollen tendon. It doesn't mean you rupture it. No. Okay. The number of those that actually go on to rupture. I think it's, it's almost remarkable. protective. It's almost protective. I think the pain can be thicker. almost protective. Your tendon's thicker and it hurts, so you don't do the explosive yeah. activity. So actually, most people have basically have a pristine tendon yeah. and they woke up one day, it's popped. It's crazy, isn't it? Just no warning signs. No warning signs at all. But you can't live in fear either. So no, you can't. You, know. you can't live in fear, and you shouldn't stop doing things. No, but no. I think I'm sure you'll agree. I mean, when some, I'd like your opinion. What should they be doing to warm up before yeah. these activities to minimise the chance of rupture? Yeah. What do you think they should do, Chris? So I definitely see a group of, I'm not even sure it's just, warming up is really important. So don't just suddenly, you know, you're five minutes late to get to the five-a-side, which is classic, isn't it? Five-a-side yeah. or squash is the big one. 
and you're a bit late and you don't really do anything, you just go straight into it. There's no doubt that that is probably increasing your risk of a rupture. So it is important to get there, increase your heart rate, run around a little bit, do some dynamics movements, dynamic stretches, not just hanging your foot over the edge of the curb, pushing up against the lamppost. And, so you and mean just going up the escalator on a tube on the way there? Is not no, that doesn't work. And the Uber, the Uber on the way, the way there isn't a warm up either. Uh, but but the other thing we see it a lot in, and this is the other thing I was going to bring up, is we've with COVID, uh, people have changed their uh, lifestyles, their activity levels. We've seen so many more Achilles ruptures in the last two yeah. years. And, and, and there's got, something and, in and it. And I have. I, I've, yeah. seen, I've seen a, a big surge in the number I'm seeing in yeah. my clinic. But also it's because you've been relatively mobile. Yeah. You're suddenly ramping up. And it's, it is, it's not the season athlete. Who ruptures to the kidney stand and you don't see it's the, it's the arm season yeah, 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 yeah. 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 and that's what i was going to say it's often not a, you know warm-ups are important yeah. and that sort of thing building up your exercise tolerance slowly is important um but actually the ones we see it in is oh i went and played five-a-side football for the first time in two years no and, and i'm going to disagree with them because yeah. they, it doesn't happen the first time they play all right second time then. the second no, time okay for the first time they're, they're cautious careful. yeah they're yeah, cautious. yeah 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 second yeah. time go how many times the second time I played after how many years? 15 yeah. years. I've my dentist. Yeah, you know? that's true. Okay, now I want to get into the the one of the reasons we really wanted to do this is because we are getting so many emails, so many people worried about how they should manage an Achilles rupture. There's yeah. lots of conversations around should you have it surgically repaired? If you're a premiership footballer, there is no doubt you're having it surgically repaired. So why is there don't answer this yet, we'll come on to it. Why is there such a push now, uh, particularly in the NHS, to manage all of these non-surgically and conservatively? Now, let's go right back to the beginning, because I think the other thing that we've talked about is how important that first few days of management Correct. is, and how this whole process, doesn't matter if you do it surgically or conservatively, the whole process can go wrong Absolutely. from the beginning. So, so imagine, Sam, so, you're playing squash. Do you play squash? Uh, yes, I have done. Okay, you, 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 and let's say, Fine. real life story tonight, you play squash for the first time or second time. Fine. You feel or you hear something pop at the yeah. back of your Achilles. So you what hear do you something do? pop or bang or someone else. The one thing about Achilles, someone else comments that they heard it. Right, okay. okay yeah. If you break a bone, other people in the room don't, unless you really hear a proper yeah, yeah. crack. Yeah, people don't hear it. Yeah. But the Achilles tendon, the person playing with you hears it. Yeah. The person on the sideline hears it because you get this explosive bat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they feel it. And they feel, and the best line I always love is, it's always you feel like you were kicked in the back of the leg. Yeah. There's a great case, kind of, I've told you about this one, right. where there was a tourist who ruptured his Achilles tendon. I don't know why he was running on Oxford Street. Maybe his next son was, maybe he was a pickpocket or something. Yeah. But as he, as he, as he was running, he ruptured his Achilles tendon. He turned around and he thought that someone kicked him. So his first reaction was to turn around and kick the person behind him who happened to be a copper. Okay. <laughs> so that's just one of those anecdotal stories. Yeah, yeah. It's a great one, but it shows what, exactly what happens. So you feel it that someone's kicking and you're looking around and you're going, hey mate, I'm, I'm in goal. There's no yeah. one behind me. I'm the yeah. last guy here. How the hell have I yeah. managed to return my this? So yeah. everyone assumes, well, they must assume they sprained their ankle. These are the, the terrible things, okay? Yeah. And and actually, the and, and I shouldn't say this. Sorry, Chris, I'm not, you're a physio. So the assessment by the, by the team physio who happens to be sitting on the sideline and just turn up and say, it's all, sometimes awful. Yeah, well, they'll just look at them and go, oh, it's all right, mate. I, it doesn't look like- Doctors also do some yeah. terrible so examination. Examination too. and you're going, guys, it's not, if you think, so that I think, look, if you think you've popped your Achilles tendon, you have popped it. Okay, Until good. proven otherwise. I think that's a good way of doing okay. it. And the other thing is, don't be put off by pain. And what I mean by that is this is not always the most, it's no, quite it's, shocking. It's shocking when it happens. But you look at David hurt. Beckham, if yeah. you just put YouTube, David Beckham, he just looks behind him. He yeah. just ruptures Achilles. There's but no David pain. David Beckham, he, I, he knew what he'd done. Yeah. And I saw the face, his facial expression on him and the see tears. On YouTube, yeah. And I could see the tears. He knew. Because he knows. This yeah. Is. But if it's not really painful, in a way that's it, that even it makes matter. it even yeah. more likely. And people actually, think it must it? be agony. You know, yeah. it isn't. Not, yeah. How could a tendon snapping? Mm. It doesn't hurt. It's less sore than if the tendon just Absolutely. pulled Absolutely. And if you had a bad Achilles, that's your pain goes. Yeah, if yeah. you've got Achilles tendon yeah, 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 you yeah, snap yeah. the yeah, pain yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you've, you've ruptured on the squash court. So you ruptured on the squash court. At least you think you have, and we're saying 
you have to have it proven that it's not by a yes. medical professional yeah. before saying, oh, I think it's okay. Yeah. So yeah. You, the word, I think the key thing to our, to our listeners is that you must, until proven otherwise, if you think you've ruptured your Achilles tendon, it's you've ruptured. ruptured. Yeah. Okay. And this Good is advice. the important thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you've then, you need to get to a medical facility fairly soon where there is a facility to be put into a position that we call equinus. Okay. Now, what we'll do is just for the for those yeah. on the thing, equinus basically means your foot should be pointing downwards so that your tendon can now get closer yeah. together. Okay? So if you imagine your Achilles is there, this is called dorsiflexion. That would stretch it. That is literally the worst, worst thing, thing you, you could do. Because what you're doing is you're pulling the two ends apart. Yes. And so it's not going to heal. Whereas if you point your toe, it comes together. So the two ends oppose. And you need to be in that position from the, from the first yes, minute. Absolutely, yeah. Or well, the first. You need to yeah. walk around with your like that, with your foot limping like that. around like that exactly. and get some help. So getting get a good stretch on it doesn't help. No, a bit of tube grip won't help. No. So you need something. Now the facility to keep that is either they put a plaster on your leg, and often they're interesting. They'll put the plaster at the front to stop it bending upwards. Yeah, so yeah. They call it an anterior slab. Yeah. Or they put you in a boot. And you can do the same thing. So if, for example, you have and a you'd have heel, you'd, you'd with with lots of heel boot or lots of heel raises, heel weights, so but you've got out. to have the foot pointing downwards, yeah. and and really that should be done straight away. straight away, but within forty eight hours. Yeah. Okay. And the reason is 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 very is very simple. And I think the simplest way I look at it is uh, is your tendon lives within the sheath. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the, the sheath is like a like a, the out outer bit of the of a sausage, you know, yeah, yeah. and the meat is the, on the inside. Okay, yeah. that's your tendon. So yeah, yeah. what like happens? The skin is, of the sausage. Skin of the sausage. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the skin of the sausage is so the tendon's within that. But if you then if you pop your tendon and the two ends migrate far apart, you will bleed. Yeah. And when we see these, and you see them on ultrasound, I see yeah. them. We have opened them and operate. And when they bleed, when that blood gets congealed, so initially it's watery blood. So right. if you push the foot into the so-called ballerina, let's say ballerina position, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toes yeah, yeah, pointing yeah, downwards, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah. As if you're doing point, okay? Yeah. If you push, then the tendon will slide within the sheath and the ends will come together. Yeah. But after 48 hours, that blood has congealed and congealed blood forms like right. a scar tissue and the ends no longer yeah. slide together. So it's going to be a suboptimal repair, repair. A sub straight optimal, away. It's sub yeah. So, so sub suboptimal healing. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, so the problem then is the debate is, is which you're going to come to, the treatment. Yeah, yeah. But the debate for treatment really is only if you've presented early yeah, yeah. to A&E. So yes, yeah. if you go within the first 48 hours, then you can actually get a good outcome yeah, with, yeah. with or without surgery. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Depending on what we, we'll come we'll to in a minute. To, yeah. But but if you have turned up at five days, yeah, yeah. then you are going to get a poor result from surgery. And yeah. I know there are people that say, well, you can ultrasound them. They don't come together. They'll yeah. never come together because that stuff is congealed. Yeah, so yeah. you always have a permanent... Well, effect. on ultrasound, it will be hard It'll to be differentiate hard to, the, it, the good the, stuff yeah. from the... The bad stuff. Yeah. So, so let's. When we talk about an Achilles rupture, the majority of the ruptures we see would be in the mid portion. So, like five yeah. centimeters up from the yeah. the calcane. And that is your typical. That's your typical that's one. Your typical one. And that's get, when you can feel the gap. You feel the and gap, and when you squeeze the calf, the foot no longer moves. Yeah. Those but you can the, also rupture them down at the heel and further up. And essentially, they are treated very similarly. Very similarly, they? but yeah, the. Yeah. But they are different and rarer versions. Now, that yeah. I, I personally think that the ones that happen further up yeah. is actually a bit of a pat on the back. <laughs> and you feel a bit happy because you go, phew, they heal. Because they're a bit like a serious bit more Mus muscular tendon Because junction, we yeah. know that the problem with the Achilles, Chris, as you know, it, is, is, is the, the blood supply is yeah. so poor. Yeah, yeah. That's why they rupture. Yeah, yeah. Because they have a little bit of disease they can't heal. Yeah, yeah. And they rupture. Yeah. And also when you operate on them or you treat them, with or without surgery, their healing times are slow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, this it is takes a slow. A, everything thing. about this is I, slow. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. it's just slow. It's just yeah. slow burn. Yeah, yeah. You know, you said why was David Beckham crying? Because he's thinking this is slow burn. This is my. This is one yeah, year yeah. gone. You know, yeah, yeah. he just knows it's happened. Tell me how many muscle tears take that long to heal? Yeah, there's no other muscle tear. No. If you tear your calf muscle, I mean, pretty much by six, seven days, patients saying, "Yeah, I feel all right." 
You know? Yeah, well, tendons are definitely a different ball game. They take a lot longer. longer. And also, you know, there's lots of stuff out there. Of, you know, this treatment speeds up healing and that. And at the end of the day, it just takes you time. Know, it takes time. And, you and have to respect that it. decision. People, yeah. That, yeah. That and the, and the more time. you dick about with it, yeah, yeah. the more complications you have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Okay, so you've been to A&E. They've said it's a rupture. Um, and, and that's the other thing is at this point, you don't actually have to have any imaging, do you? So a lot of people we see yeah. is like, oh, I need a scan. I need no. a scan. Well, actually, any, the first any thing intelligent doctor is get them into that to diagnose an Achilles rupture. Yeah. The worst diagnosis. And this is this is the one thing that I, I always employ is you. And I will say to I know when I do talk to GPs. Yeah. The partial tech. Yeah, okay. partial Oh, tennis. they give you a nice pat. Oh, it's really good, mate. You've only you know, partially, partially torn, torn it. Aren't you lucky? Yeah. You will always have something in that gap, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will always have something in that gap. And yeah, the yeah. reason is, you remember... It's so what you're saying is that... So let's be clear. So, And this is a really important point. So if you feel that sudden pop and there's been acute... Uh, not even a trauma, but an acute episode... Yes. And you get that pop... What we're saying is, this is it, these don't hash. partially tear. Yeah, they don't partially tear. And, yeah. and, and, and why do people say, oh, really good news, I can feel a partial tear? Because remember we talked about the analogy, the yeah. skin of the sausage? Yeah, yeah. The skin is still there. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Or the plantaris. Or the, the plantaris tendon, which you will have this horrible fat tendon next to it, which yeah. only causes pain in life, doesn't do anything good for us. <laughs> yeah. That can sometimes be felt in the yeah. gap. Okay? Yeah. And, but the other thing is, Chris, when you rupture, even a complete rupture, what happens in reality and when you see these, and when we open them, because we do open them for surgery, obviously, is you'll get 80% of the tendon will have complete ruptured. But 20% yeah. is just stretched a bit. And but it's become a big useless It's totally useless, point, but yeah. you know, there is something in the gap. Yeah, yeah. So to say that there's an absolute gap. Now, so the mistake is the partial tear. It isn't, I have a picture of Homer Simpson on a slide I have of Homer Simpson. And I say, you know, it's the idiot's diagnosis, okay? Oh, yeah. To make a partial Achilles tendon rupture. Unless you are so this so the key thing there, and this is also very in you know, if you if you're if you're if you're a physiotherapist, yeah. for example, you've seen them, I know the advice is dump the problem on someone else. Yeah, okay? yeah. Which is either A and E, yeah, or in so if they've got that classic patient. history, so it's an Achilles rupture. rupture it's not your call to make it a completely yeah. proven otherwise. You have it is yeah. not your place to call it a partial tear. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, that's really good advice. So you've been to A and E, you've got your your foot in an Aquinas position. Um, and it's going to have to be like that for long time. A long time. So let's just establish that. Whatever yeah. happens, yeah, yeah. Whatever happens, it's going to be roughly like that for about ten weeks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your life has now yeah. stopped. Then what happens? Or we see a big group of patients that start going. Mm, they start googling like everybody does Absolutely. these days, and they go, "Well, hang on." Or, or often what happens is, well, that Chelsea player ruptured last week. He's had surgery. Why am I not having surgery? Right. So people start looking. There's lots of information out there about whether you should manage this conservatively with a boot without surgery or with um, surgery. So what we want to get onto now is, I was going to ask you, Sam. In fact, let's start with this. If you ruptured your Achilles, which we've already said you had last night or tonight playing squash, Fine. Which luckily you don't play, so hopefully it's not going to yep. happen. I haven't tempted fate. Would you have surgery or would you go for conservative treatment? That's it. Uh, straight in at the deep end. Straight in, uh, it's a fab question. Yeah. So as we discussed earlier, return to support and, and, and how much exercise I do is not being great. Yeah. So actually, I yeah. would treat mine conservatively. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you why, yeah. Chris, because I don't play tennis. I don't play really play squash. Okay. No. Football I haven't played for years. Yeah. I'm might do a bit of running. Yeah. I cycle quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. But those are not activities that puts my tendon at risk of re rupture. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's something uh that, that's why I would go So that because way. because you're not doing any high impact sports, um Absolutely. You, you feel like conservative treatment will give you the opportunity to get back to yeah. hiking walking the things yeah. that you do that i can do um, and i enjoy i can actually do them fine yeah okay yeah. and i probably will keep doing them fine yeah but that does not mean that that's but i have patients looking at me and saying i'm the same age you i but i'll treat yours with surgery yeah yeah and why because it depends what you want to do yeah. and what you expect to do. right okay? yeah and i think that's a lot of it yeah, okay? yeah. There's also an element. I mean, I'm not. I'm self. I'm partly self-employed. Yeah, yeah. And and the fact it's that really important. And, yeah. and it's important because I need to be able to. 
I could still operate with the boot on. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I can't. If I've had surgery, I know I have to rest it to get the wound healed up. Yeah, yeah. I have got that. You know, I've yeah. got to give myself that period to get the wound healed. Okay. Yeah. So you know, it could that could be a fact as well. Maybe. Yeah. And I think the other thing as well is, and there's lots of evidence that's been done on this now. Uh, maybe in the past, people thought that conservative treatment, so non-surgical treatment, had slightly higher re-rupture rates. But I think there's enough evidence now to say that the re-rupture rates across the board are quite similar to whether yes. it's conservative and, and or I think, surgical. And I think, I think, I, I think that's something we need to stress. Okay. Yeah. And we do need to stress that they are quite similar. Yeah. So if I wanted to put you off conservative treatment, I could say, you know. Roughly, so different data, there's lots of different data, but in my overall reading everything and looking at all the studies, so there's a lot of studies that claim they're the solution to the problem. There isn't, because we can never have a big enough study yeah. for, this, for, for yeah. this information. The standardized enough, because when you read the small print, they've taken out the really elite sportsmen already yeah. straight away. Sure, we yeah. must forget that. Well, they're, just, taken they're, just not, yeah. they're not in yeah. the NHS trial. Absolutely. Are they, and, so. and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, and, and I'm sorry, but I'm probably. In Swansea, people are not as active as they are in Clapham Common. Yeah, okay? yeah. So we're talking about the Swansea because so there's Swansea, the smart the trial. trial. Yeah. Which but they're not the same population that we see, yeah. that you see and look after. Yeah. You know, they're... But this is the problem with research, isn't it? If they've got, I think they had around 300 people in the smart trial. Yeah. And that is 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 60 year olds, 70 year olds. It's, yeah, exactly. So, so, if, so... It was, if it was Sam Singh, it's fine. Yeah. But if it's the guy who's still playing rugby, yeah, veterans yeah. rugby, if it's the guy who's still, you know, playing in the squash league, yeah, yeah. it's a, we have to treat the different patients differently. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose just thinking aloud, let's say that your conservative treatment doesn't work, you've still then got the option you've got of the, the surgery. Yeah. So, so firstly, so have, failed, have you still got the option? Absolutely. So failed conservative treatment. Yeah. So surgery absolute indications are if you re-rupture a, conserv uh, a, conservative. a conservative, you unless you've got a a, a, a doctor who's really avoiding the job, you've got to repair it. Okay. Right. Okay. So re-rupture has to, or a re-rupture of any type yeah. has to be repaired. Right. Okay. And if you present late, I still feel you have to have a repair. So if you come to me at five days, then it's I'm not going to be talking to you unless you've got a lot of medical issues. Yeah. Or you're very, uh, for example, very elderly, which you do see as well. Yeah. Uh, or you really want to cope with the surgery for other personal reasons. I would really say at that stage you have to think about operation. But if you come to me day one, day two, or even week two, but you've been in some form of equinus position, remember your ballerina position where yeah, your yeah. toes pointing downwards with either a slab or a boot, then I can talk to you about both options. It doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say that we have opted for conservative treatment. Can you just run through the sort of rough guidelines or protocol that you use with your, your patients? So we vary individually. I think going into a boot day one is quite harsh. Yeah. A, because the leg is quite swollen. B, because you're worried. Yeah. Okay. And at that point, forcing you to start weight bearing, etc., is difficult. Yeah. Plus the boots need a little bit of specialist fitting as well. Okay. Either it doesn't have to be done by the consultant or something, but it does require either the someone even within the hospital and I, sometimes I don't think A&E is the best place for boots to be fitted okay well I think it depends what time you yeah, go in you the go day in the, as well yeah, if you've seen someone's never put one on and he's reading the book then you know yeah. it's sometimes safer to go into a cast yeah, and then right. in a planned system either in the fracture clinic or if you're seeing a private specialist he will take the cast off at some point and say now we put you to a boot and that's normally after a I would say with, so with a conservative I'd say after, after about 10 days to 2 weeks I think yeah. that's the time to go in the boot because the swelling is coming down yeah. you're, like, you're confident at that point because you also got used to the crutches you've got used to getting around Yeah. and as I said crutches the first 2 weeks you're really not doing much weight bearing okay yeah. and that's I think a fair protocol because one one says, and some people really say, "Oh, we 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 diagnose it, we wait them, bear them the second it happens." Yeah. But the problem is, you're also in a way then negating the seriousness of the condition to the patient. Right. You almost yeah, 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 okay? yeah, yeah. You need to people yeah, need yeah. to know that this is a serious injury yeah. they've had. Okay? Whereas if uh, we were talking about earlier, if you've had the operation, you take it, you seriously. Take it seriously. You protect you it. Take you take it seriously. You protect you it. Give it a you bit think, more. You think, "God, I, a... I made. I chose this route." Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the similarly, if you but if you've been stub shoved in the boot by the A and E SHO at, yeah. four, at, one, at eleven o'clock at night, yeah, yeah. and it says get on with it. I mean, I've had the patients they take the boot off. You know, well, I've I've had patients where they haven't put the heel raises into the the boot, so they're actually flat. They're not in the ballerina position, 
and, no option then. So and that's you, that, that unfortunately means that they've made the decision for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so, so actually, so just keeping it calm, getting over the issue, learning how to cope with the yeah. crutches, learning how to slow down in life. Because remember, planning work, planning, planning yeah. you know, Every who's looking after the kids yes. because this is very exactly. debilitating. Those are initially. all very important. People forget yeah. that. People forget yeah. that, you know, you don't want someone to underplay how serious the industry. You want yeah. to have to start thinking, hey, I can't do everything. Yeah. I can't get into work now. Yeah. I need to change back to working for home, from home for a while. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Put those place, measures in place. Yeah. So two weeks, I'd say, roughly 10 days, two weeks, some form of cast. Um, then there comes a great debate about ultrasound, you know. So, so do I? So that's a good question, isn't it? So, when should you get some imaging? Uh, so, first thing is, a, do you need imaging? Yeah. And b, so number one is, it is not vital to have imaging. Okay. Yeah. There, there is no, there is, you know, if you if if you have a competent clinician diagnosing, it can be your physio, it can be, yeah. your, it can be uh, the A&E doctor. If, some, if someone, call, it can be your orthopedic doctor. Someone competent probably doesn't need to diagnose. I must confess, I I very rarely image the Achilles tendon. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And it's very interesting, the ones I operate and the ones I don't image, almost. Right, okay, because yeah. I know that I'm going to be in there, so I'll see it. Oh, okay, well, that's right. I don't yeah, I know yeah, where yeah. I'm I know. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you, Sam, because it, I'm just thinking if I ruptured my Achilles and I'm going to go conservative, fine. I am not going to sit around for eight weeks hoping no. that those two so, end up so, together. So I agree, agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I would expect, if I'm going to treat them conservatively, yeah. partly because of the, because by about the week three, imagine they, coming out by about week three, they, the go, they do say, Sam, should I have had an ultrasound? So yeah, yeah. I get the little, like, um, can you? <laughs> yeah, I always get an email that should I have had. So I, yeah. I, I so absolutely correct. With conservative ones, I will, I do ultrasound. Okay? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it's like I have to do that minute. I don't want to say, okay, fine, look, we're going to treat conservatively. In the yeah. next, when there's the next slot available, we'll get used to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. to check that we're going, we're not barking up the wrong Because it would just be a nightmare to come Absolutely. out of a boot. And you do sometimes weeks. see problems, because yeah, yeah. you've seen them where yeah, you, yeah. Get, you get fat. They've torn the, the yeah, yeah, back of the sausage skin. Yeah, yeah. They've torn the sausage skin. Yeah. And the fat's popped into the gap. Yeah, the And the fat's fat, ever gonna, yeah. ever, never going to heal that bit. So, yeah, yeah. So then you pick those ones up and you go, oh, this is different, maybe revert plan. Yeah. Okay. So you've got two weeks in a sort of plaster cast, roughly yeah. speaking, and then what? Another six weeks in a boot. Uh, or... Conservative. I will tend to go for the full ten weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ten I weeks. go for ten weeks of immobilisation. And just to be clear, that does mean you've got a boot on. You're wearing it at night. You're wearing it at night. Seven, at least for the first six. Take weeks. it off at to least, clean it. Take it off a clean yeah. it, and you're taking it off with your foot. Dylan Ball. We love remember ballerina position yeah yeah so you can have a shower take it off for a shower yeah yeah but you're sitting on a stool and your foot's in the yeah, ballerina yeah. position okay yeah, yeah. ballerina foot stays in that position yeah. and then as you go through that period of six weeks or eight weeks you start taking that you change the angle yeah so that you don't need to be quite pointing down like a ballerina we slowly bring yeah. you up in a controlled manner yeah and at the game plan is and, and and the game plan and this is what people this is what i i say this is like a sponge cake Okay, <laughs> when your sponge cake, whatever you put into it, when you take out your sponge cake at, at the right time, it should not be too moist, it should not be too dry, yeah. and it should have risen. What happens between week zero and week 10, if you're treating conservatively, doesn't matter. Everyone changes, everyone varies. Yeah, yeah. But I have to have at week 10, a tendon that is not excessively overstretched we'll come because the yeah, worst yeah. thing is that and has the correct tension on it yeah. so that it feels like a uh it's it's right yeah and yeah. i don't care what it was like at six weeks uh, so then when people say well i gotta do this i gotta do this i can i push me harder on it it doesn't matter just come out 10 weeks if you deliver if i get delivered the tendon at 10 weeks with the regime we're using of conservative treatment that is got the right tension yeah. that's the right thickness that isn't too lax, it isn't too yeah. tight, at 10 weeks, they're gonna have a perfect athlete. Yeah. And from a physio there. point of view, we see that, you know, it's, yeah. it, I always, and one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because we do see such a variation in not overall outcome. I think they all generally do pretty well at around that six months. I mean, return to sport is that six to nine yeah. months. If it all goes smoothly, which it doesn't always, but we see loads in the clinic and you'll get one person walking past and you know they are at three months. And then you've got another one at six months who's still limping. And there's a lot of variation. A lot of variation. And there's a lot of skill because we see so many of them in the clinic. It's really important that you're seeing a physiotherapist that basically knows what they're doing and Absolutely. has loads of experience of seeing them because it does vary. And as you say, 
it doesn't really matter where you are at six weeks. I had a patient the other day where we've had to put them in a boot for, sorry, at 10 weeks, we've actually put them back in a boot for a couple of weeks because things aren't, then, right. you know, the cake's not rising not as right. it should. Yeah. And actually delaying that, we know that that means that they're going to be able to push on after that. Now, the other thing I was going to talk about is from a physio point of view, and lots of people say, well, when should I start physio? When, when shouldn't I? The sort of key things I like is I want them putting full weight through their tendon once they're in the boot, so around that three or four absolutely. weeks. Absolutely. So, so, and I think absolutely. that really, because if you're if you're just if you're limping around, there's no stimulus for the tendon yeah. so, to get so stronger. Some weight, but rem yeah. but we have to remember if you're put stuck in a boot like a ballerina, yeah, yeah, you can't put full weight because you fall over. Okay. It's so difficult. you can load it. You can, you load, can load it. it. You're not so you walking can't, you can't. normally, but you can still put and that's weight through. You can do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, I totally agree. And yeah, we yeah. all know for tendon healing, some and there was a study. From, bones. There, was a study from, there was a study from Blackburn about 15 years ago. It was yeah. about early weight bearing. Early. And the key thing they said actually yeah. is you've got to load yeah. the tendon early on to get good bone. I think we get healing, we get tendon. better healing, he, better scar yeah. tissue so formation. You want some loading, yeah. but the practicality is. And I get patients, you know, in the last minute, but you know, but but can I really start walking? And I looked at, mate, good luck yeah, yeah. walking in a boot with your foot at 30 yeah, yeah. degrees angle. But the principle you, of getting the toe but down. something down. Yeah, yeah. So you're not hopping. If at five weeks or six weeks, I've got a patient that's hopping in on a boot, I know that that is going to take a long period of time for the tendon to get stronger Absolutely. and to remodel. If I've got a patient that three or four weeks might still have crutches, but is getting a nice bit of weight through the tendon, then I good. think they're going to be easier. And also, a lot of like getting back to support sport is about confidence. Yes. There's a lot of fear and there's that situational fear. So if you've ruptured playing squash, you have that real situational fear about going back to squash. You might actually be fine going off you do do tennis. Yeah, yeah tennis start tennis yeah. um we're up to the other one yeah I? um and um so i look, i think it's really important that you get some early weight going through it and also from a physio point of view we do want people to start doing some simple exercises at Absolutely. three or four weeks so Absolutely. actually take probably more like four or five six weeks taking the boot off and just doing some simple seated calf raise but that has to be done under the supervision. Absolutely. Because the worst thing you can do, and it's probably worth us mentioning it again now, is this tendon elongation. So if you stretch the tendon, it's like an elastic band, isn't it? Yeah. If you stretch an elastic band, there's a point where it either snaps or it doesn't return to its um, starting position. So you're losing that you lose spring. It. And you can never compensate. You can that. never get it back. So 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 it has to come out right. And, and the supervision is important. Yeah, yeah. So there are various protocols. So obviously, our patients that come to you, they have they have a access to good physio. Yeah. But just say someone's listened to this, who's got a uh, who's on um, who, who's NHS patient, been pushed a little bit to the side. Yeah, they're and that's happening that unfortunately a lot. A lot. A lot you know, they're not. Yeah, yeah. They're getting a bit of online physio one session and stuff, and yeah, which is phone. You know, yeah, don't get that started on that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then there are a lot of protocols, and yeah. the great key there is that for patients, you can find the protocols. And you yeah. can safely do them. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we know what the issues. So they're all public. Even, they're all public. You know, all public there. Available, it's all really, public. Available. Yeah. So there are some simple stuff you can start doing and start it. But the the other thing we'll forget that the first three or four weeks, it's a bit cruel to start people on hard bridges because it hurts. You're yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're not used to even the basics yeah, yeah. of being suddenly being independent. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly we love long in this giant boot device that we put on them yeah, yeah. or this cast we put on them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just on that point, just just to recap, Chris, you know, some centers do put them in a in a in a in a cast yeah. in a quietness for five weeks. And to be honest, there's no real difference in that. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In some factors, it's sometimes nicer because yeah, yeah. then the you know patients feel yeah. reassured that they're not going to accidentally yeah, yeah. take it off and fall over. Or, yeah, uh, of course. You know, it's, so a it's a careful balance between, balance. between so it, yeah. you can easily overdo it and those are the ones we yeah. do. And get just because we see about a lot of promotion from different boot manufacturers that yeah, yeah. this is the back of it, this is one we have to be using, it doesn't mean that actually that's the only way. No, of course. Okay, just because they're, they're you know there's this industry sponsor. Yeah, yeah push for things you know it doesn't mean that and treating even if you are sports. if you're not a sports person you're not interested in getting back to running but these generally do really well don't they, they? Yeah, and they take time and you don't need to rush it but they the people don't. that we see a lot of are the ones that like how do i get back quicker how do i make sure i'm running in six months and you know so we can optimize it but at the end of the day you it's still going to take time it doesn't the matter die is cost it okay? doesn't matter how so if we go back to if we go back to david beckham's story yeah so when that happened 
Um, I was a young consultant then. I remember the story happened and it came out and I, and I was thinking, who's going to fix it? Who's going to fix it? And then they, they found some clown from Finland, okay, who declared that he's going to have him back playing football at six weeks, okay? Oh, really? Yeah, and he was on TV and I saw he goes, we have a technique, we're going to have him back at six weeks. It doesn't Obviously, happen. He didn't, he didn't play, no. he didn't play competitively for 15 months no. and he never played at the same no. level. Now, I'm not saying that people won't play after no. because the level he's expected to play is very different to what yeah. our, our, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. platform is expected to play, yeah, yeah. you know, but, yeah, you yeah. know, but um, it's just... And even show. in premiership football is where they've got all the medical staff around. Absolutely. You. You've got people that come back at, yeah. You know, with Michael Jackson, yeah. the <laughs> 10, you know. <laughs> you, you've got, you've got people that are getting back, you know, even before that six yeah. month mark. And then there's people in the same team that are getting back after a year. And it's because there's and been no fault of complications. The, yeah, and, and also the other thing I observe, I don't know if you, you know, how quickly people lose their calf varies. I mean, some yeah, people, yeah. they come at, at 48 hours, their calf shrivel. Yeah. And that's another thing that from a physio point of view, I want to mention is that when you look at your calf after you've been in a boot for 12 weeks, it, I mean, it looks, it's shriveled up. It's shriveled. And... Like even chicken, after like chicken, two years, the chicken, um, the chicken wing versus the chicken drums. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. even after two years, it's shown that you are going to have it's less calf strength. More. Yeah. You're probably not going to be able to lift your heel up quite as high. So you're never actually going to yeah, get Chris, it right you, versus that. Do you want to just show that what you meant by that? On the just, show, yeah. the just show us what you meant. Chris is going to demonstrate. So this is called single heel race. Um, Chris, can you just do a double heel race for us first? That's a double heel race, and that we expect is. Uh, that patients can do quite early on. But what Chris is going to demonstrate now is a single heel raise. And I actually do not panic, even if a patient can't do that for about nine months post-surgery. That is a very hard maneuver. Now, what Chris is saying is that when you go on single heel raise uh, there, patients' heels are, when they've ruptured Achilles tendon, their single heel raise height tends to be a bit lower like you're seeing now. It doesn't quite go as high, but it's it's it, we encourage it because it's a good parameter. But if a pay, I say to them at the outset, Chris, nine months of a single heel raise because because I've seen patients take that long. Yeah, and you, and Chris is saying to me, well, they it's usually quicker. And I say it's good, but at nine months after that, I panic. Yeah. It could, then could be a problem with the Achilles yeah, itself. Yeah. But actually, until I'm, and, they, and those guys that are young, one year back playing all their sports. So yeah. it's a little bit delayed, but they're back doing everything just a bit. Yeah, slower. I mean, I if if a patient can't do that in nine months, I would <laughs> I would take that personally. Okay. So, but I but at the same time, if it depends, doesn't it? If you want to get back to football, we need to get that. But actually, yeah. you don't have to be able to single leg heel raise to walk without a limp, you know, or at least you don't need to have a full heel. And, and I get the same. I say, look, and then yeah. I get I actually get patients do the yeah. same, saying, oh, you know, I want to do a bit of a short run. But I can't because I can't single hero. Yeah. I said, mate, you can. Yeah. You didn't even know you could do that before the actual yeah, yeah. single hero. So just... I do find some, and we'll come on to operations now. But I do find sometimes that if they're operated, sometimes you can get that back a little bit you can earlier a little bit with a bit more, and Absolutely. the patient feels a bit more confident. But I, I would want to get a single heel raise between four and six months. I would, sure. I, I, and I would, I've had them at three months. And, and, yeah, and I've seen them, but it before. varies. But it does vary. So yeah. what, what I'm trying to say is, do I get massively panicked? No, sure. And, and but I, no, I don't. And no, I just no. think some people are different. Some of yeah, and absolutely. some of may have been a little bit more over immobilized at yeah. the beginning. They may have had lost a lot of calf bulk right at the yeah. beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, etc. Those are the kind of. So let's say we've gone through conservative. So actually, from a physio point of view, conservative versus surgical, there's not a huge amount of difference from the no. rehab protocols that we use. Absolutely. But just talk to me about what do you actually do in surgery? Like, Fine. It's, yeah. it's a brilliant question. And I know you're seeing a client of mine this yeah. afternoon, uh, uh, this tomorrow, afternoon, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow for surgery. Yeah. So, so what will you be doing to her? Fine. So, so. So I'll well I'll talk to you about what we went through with her, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. With 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 the discussion, okay? Yeah. So so uh, this patient who you know well, so she's be and I told her we might discuss her on this podcast. So okay. She's very happy for us to talk yeah. about. Her. So she is um, about forty four years old. Yeah. But she still is active. Very. And active. her main passions are horse riding and netball. Okay. And she loves netball. Okay. And she, she plays lives, at a pretty good at a pretty good level yeah, yeah. still. Yeah. And she says she's older than a lot of players on the team, but she's still as, as good as them and wants to keep playing. Yeah. Her worry is that she injured the Achilles playing nipple. Yeah, so on she's Saturday, on, I think it was. Saturday, yeah. So yeah. she's worried, you know, will I, what's my chance of re-rupture, yeah. is what she asked me. And now, I spoke to her, yeah. and what do you think I said? 
I said, are you in an Aquinas position? And she said, before we even started talking about she surgery, said yes, she was. Because yeah. immediately she'd gone to A&E yeah. and she had been put in the, in the car. So she's got the, the options. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So what did I, what did I worry, what do I worry about her there? So number one is she plays um, netball uh, and has no intention of stopping. Yeah. Okay. And netball yeah. is a sport that people do play even veterans yeah. go up for a long time. She's got no intention. She's got, that is a really key thing. Key thing. She's got no intention of stopping. stopping. Whereas if she went, I was thinking about stopping netball in six months anyway, and this is sort of sped it up, it might change your decision, might not it? Absolutely. Yeah. But, but it's interesting, the other sport that she does, she horse rides competitively. Yeah, yeah. And actually the horse riding is one of the most unpredictable sports you can do. Yeah. And I can, I don't even know what happens in that <laughs> on a horse. <laughs> and imagine losing control or yeah, re-rupture yeah. ten on a horse. So her paranoia is about that, which I think is reasonable. Yeah. So we went through the options and I said, look, I will, you, I'll give you exact options. And I even said possibly slightly higher re-rupture rate treated conservatively yeah. versus surgery, but surgery has got risks. Okay. So now, let's, let's talk through those risks. Yeah. So, 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 so first, so, so how do you consent risk. someone? That's what we're it's, saying. It's very, it's very difficult because yeah, yeah. you actually, it's one of the hardest consents we do because, you know, in a court of law, someone could say, well, you should treat this conservatively based on the studies. So it's, it yeah. is probably the hardest debate we have at, of all the I'm debates. I've not thought of it like that. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there is a whole argument that will turn out that they just need to, Why find, didn't you just do they that? Need yeah. to find the guy from Swansea to come and tell us that yeah. this guy's done it wrong. But the thing is, we still do operate. And even, as you said, correctly, still most elite sportsmen in the world are operated on. Yeah. And that's not just habit, that's because they're expectations. So what are the what are the benefits of operating versus conservative? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, well, the risk, what's the, the risk? So the, the, risk of, the risks of surgery are, the, there is one risk that is extra. So if you're in a period of, in a boot for 10 weeks, you've got the same risk really of DVT, yeah. or thrombosis, which is something is a definite, so blood clots. it's a blood clot, and that's a definite risk with Achilles injuries. Okay, yeah, so yeah. one thing you must be sure of that you're on blood thinner. Okay? Yeah, so whether you've you're... got a red, hot, swollen calf, calf you need to go to A&E. Immediately, yeah, yeah. okay. That's because of so all the bleeding all in the, the bleeding, area. Yeah. And the, yeah. But uh, but also, but you are, it's because your calf muscle and you're not is moving. the main thing that works. And you can't use your calf muscle because you've stopped it with the boot yeah. or you've torn your, uh, your calf or yeah, your yeah. Achilles complex. What? So DVT, so you lose that muscle. You lose that muscle. So the blood's not so moving around. It becomes yeah. stagnant. You get so. Clocked, so yeah. whether you operate or don't operate, the risk of DVT is, is still is high. Yeah. So you have to be on blood clots. Other risks. Will you? You'll be in a cast or boot either way. Correct. Okay. You said be on blood thinners. Is that if obviously after surgery you put no, but on. no, everyone has to be whether you even conservative. conservative, and that's very. Is important. that done routinely? It is. You should be done routinely. And it's interestingly, if it's if the patients have gone to A and E, then that's usually done. Okay. So they what would they give them generally? Injections in the stomach. Right. Yeah. Like saying you know low molecular weight yeah. heparin injections, and it's, it is it is mandatory. It's almost mandatory because it's known to be yeah, an yeah. Achilles injury is a high risk injury. Yeah. Or it's up to like twenty five percent even yeah. with calf tears. So yeah. Alone with it's a, so it's a definite risk. Okay. Yeah. So we do have to treat them aggressively. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's that risk same. So what are the additional risks in operation? The main risk is wound healing. Yeah. Okay, and why do we say that? So we know that the Achilles tendon, there's no flesh. Okay, so if you look at the Achilles tendon, and we showed this earlier, there's it's the tendon is just under the skin. Yeah, yeah. So there's no fat, there's no muscle sheath. There's you know, so even no, if you get a superficial infection, it's, it's going to infect, infect the tendon. Infected, yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. And also you're putting foreign material in, like stitches. You know, yeah, yeah. so they are snide us for infection. The blood supply to the area is terrible. Hey. That's why you're here because you've yeah, yeah, your yeah. tendon because it doesn't have any propensity to heal itself. Yeah. So, you know, it's a it's one of the most avascular areas yeah, in yeah. the body. There is li very little natural problem. So that's and, why. And if you get an infection, you're going to be put on antibiotics. You're going to have to. Or you might even have difficulty closing. You but may even, it is, okay. Yeah, but it is not common. It's and, not. and the problem that we have is that many of the things, literature we see is based on the operation being done by whoever is available because having been yeah. a trainee and I know yeah. uh, you know that it's a kind of nice yeah, operation yeah. you leave to the registrar to do yeah, yeah you know in the evening go you do it you know you've got yeah, the time yeah. you can do it tonight because yeah, yeah. it's a good training one had learned how to do tendon repair but obviously the quality of the repair by consultant yeah, yeah. And, the, and I suppose and obviously in the NHS you don't you don't you don't know, you don't know who's going to do it and it may not be done by the consultant it might just often done by a junior yeah. hence hence you're not comparing you're not comparing the like for like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, is my infection rate nil? No, it's not. 
Okay, but is it is it uh, is it like some studies just fifty percent? God no, I should you know no. I'm meant to wash my hands before an operation. No, it's yeah, not fifty yeah. percent. It's probably about five to ten percent. Yeah, yeah, and usually you can manage it. Sometimes it can be very difficult. Yeah, yeah, and you may have to get involved with plastic surgery, etc. So that's the one. That's yeah, the yeah. real risk over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, you can't say general anesthetics risk because you know it's not really. Yeah, risk, okay? yeah. All right. So infection. Yeah, yeah. So why do I sometimes operate? Okay. Yeah. Is what you're going to say? Why do I? There's some additional. Risk. Because, well, no, I think I, I understand why you operate yeah. them because I I think from a physio point of view, we I think one of the key things is the serious, not the serious, I mean, look, this thing's not going to kill you, let's be clear, but the seriousness of the injury. So if you've had an operation done and you, you've you you've gone, you've had a general anaesthetic, you've re, you know, you've had to change your whole life for a week, you know, you take that injury pretty seriously, don't you? And you follow the protocol. Sometimes with conservative treatment, people can be a little bit blasé. Yes. Um, and so, so I, and, and also in elites and, and the patient we're talking about, I, I just, I just gut feeling, I just think she'll do really well with an operation. Yep. And uh, you're right, it's there, you know, it's difficult, but at the end of the day, what I did, this is, this is for me, this is why I referred her to you, because I knew she was a potential candidate. Yes. All we can do as clinicians is provide the correct, up-to-date information to the patient. At the end of the day, they have to make the decision, you know, and that's difficult, isn't it? But, you know, we, we have to be careful and we have to make sure we give all the information so they can say, actually, I feel like I've been given all the information required to make an informed decision. The problem I find is obviously through the NHS, everything or most is done conservatively now and actually maybe not even being given the option of surgery. Yeah. So that was my main reason was go and see Sam and have a conversation. And it sounds like, you know, as you said, in the consultation, it, you were to and fro and she's made 50. the decision. Yeah. Because, because, you know, there are people who walk in and I said, you, you do great with conservative, you know, yeah. the next patient I saw, yeah. He's a bit older. He says, "How did you do it?" I was playing goal in veterans football. Yeah. Said so what? He goes, "I'm not. I don't want to play football." Well, then do that again. Not doing that again. Yeah. Fine. We treat yeah. conservatively. Also, he's ten days down the line already. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking, well, he actually you're only another seven weeks from the whole thing finishing. Yeah. So this yeah. Is going that's down, true. Let's go down that route. Yeah. So I think I think the, 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 but the surgery. So you asked what we do at surgery. So the aim of surgery, Chris, is basically to bring the tendon ends together. Yeah. Okay. Now. But what there is a satisfaction about knowing that this tendon end has been brought together. There's a stitch in there. The stitch is strong. So it, they, what's it made of? It's, it's a, so we use a strong. It's a basically kind of. It's almost like a metallic stitch. It's, yeah, it's not. A, I don't want people. It's not a stitch like you stitch your head up. No, with, is it? no. It's it's a, a I, I see them on Oxfam. They're really. They're they really look very strong. strong they're yeah. very. It's a very strong. I mean, yeah. the, the stitch. You, you know, I could hang you. You, you know, with that thread, and it would. Yeah, yeah. Your neck and you, it wouldn't tear if I hung you from that. If that's these stitches, are and you do see that in physio sometimes that they they sometimes when they've been operated they do feel a little bit more confident. I think they do feel more not confident. always, and the tendon and that can be a problem. Yeah, by the way, it, it could that can, yeah, be, can a be a problem. problem. Tends a little bit fatter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but the nice thing I have is that when I then what are the I love the fact that if you're okay at two weeks, you're going to be fine. I don't need to ever worry about. This. Because you know you've got the tension back. I've got back. the tension back. So unless somebody does something silly really in their stupid. rehab. If he slips on a banana or something. Yeah. But even if he slips on a banana, he's a bit protected with stitches holding him. Yeah, okay. okay. And I've even seen pa patients, have, have I seen patients, I've seen patients tear above the, the, oh, right, the yeah. repair. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, like yeah, a good yeah, yeah, couple yeah, of inches yeah, above the repair yeah. where there's yeah. a potential point of weakness. You know, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have fallen at yeah, that yeah. stage, okay? Yeah. But the key thing is that he just, it, what, what the reassurance is that then means I'm not worried at two weeks time and need the patient as well. You're almost reflecting what they're thinking and you know, thinking, fine, the wound's okay, there's tendons together. Now it's not gonna elongate, it's not yeah, gonna yeah. be too stiff. Actually, I can really push a rehab part out. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's and also it might not be going, you have to remember, Chris, they might not be going to you, they might be going to someone who's who really is his who's you know, who don't see who, that many. Who's yeah, 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 one yeah, a yeah. year or one every two yeah, years, yeah, yeah. you know? And actually just he's just doing, you know, a bit of calf massage, yeah, yeah. you know. So then these guys can do them themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's just it kind of goes into hinterland without worry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. So two things I want to just come on to before we finish. One is return to sport, um, and uh, we'll, we'll start with that. So just from a physio point of view, I think people always say, oh, when can I go back to sport? You when you see them at three weeks and they ask you that, you've no idea. No. You know, you know roughly it could be 
what five months to two years absolutely and average six probably nine months as an average i would say yeah um but it's very hard and, and we just take them through the process of rehab we get their calf strong and then we start adding in sort of more dynamic stuff so we'll go into different hopping tests and that's i so love we, that i mean yeah. I, I mean i you guys are so confident putting them on the little trampoline and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and i honestly have i i, I can't imagine someone bouncing on their leg after i've done their achilles repair yeah, no. well they do i'm gonna show you they do and yeah. i'm like gosh but you we know, build it up, but don't it's we? But and it's then not, it's a plan. and then we will do a proper over a period of time. We'll return them to sport. We'll give them. We'll go through a barrage of tests, so we know there's that confidence. Yes. And then we build them up slowly. It's a very slow. You don't go from like doing a few heel raises to playing football. No. There's a very much a return to the sort of sport um, uh, program that we do, um, and, and with a lot of success, I must say. The other thing I wanted to talk about is. Um, one thing that we've had recently, and we've talked about it, and people forget about it, is the potential to re-rupture, whether it's surgical or whether it's conservative. Yeah. The, if you're going to re-rupture, it seems to always happen as you start to get more confident and come out of the boot. Yes. So around that eight to 12 week, so you start yeah. walking around the house with your socks on, and it's always like a slip or something like that. Absolutely. So you have to be really cautious between eight to 12 weeks. And, and there's no harm in that time. Uh, you know, we're based in London. There's no harm, I say to patients, for the first two weeks, I know you're out of the boot, but just wear the boot on the tube. Yeah. Because oh, you that, mean uh, like 10 to 12 weeks? Yeah, 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 even, yeah, yeah. Tw even 12 yeah. to 14 weeks, yeah. doesn't matter. You get a seat, it, won't you? You get a seat and also you just, you just, you're not going to slip on the pavement. Yeah. You're not going to be knocked over. Yeah. You know, when you get to work, you can walk around that. When yeah. you get home, take everything off. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in an uncontrolled environment, being cautious is yeah. not a bad thing. Yeah. And it, it, I think the other thing is, I think it, as the public can relate to a broken bone, take six weeks, it heals generally. Yeah. But tendons, you come they out can. at 10 weeks, this thing is not healed. It's, not it's healed. healing. It's a process. But it's a process. It's not and we know that it yeah. takes a couple of years for to, this thing to absolutely. fully remodel. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a process. It's just mature enough now that it doesn't need the extra support of the boot. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But it hasn't healed. Okay. You know, it hasn't healed. It's a process, not an event. So throughout this podcast, as we come to the end, I've been thinking if I ruptured my Achilles, let's say I was absent. No, no. Let's, let's say I was playing football five aside. Um, and I ruptured my Achilles, I would also go for conservative treatment. That's fine. Because I don't play five aside. I run a bit, but I believe I can get back to running. Um, and I'm not going to play football. I'm not going to play rugby. I am also self-employed. Um, and so I would probably treat this conservatively. Yeah. Um, however, if I had any concern, I would ultrasound it and just chuck probably ultrasound it every, it every day. day. <laughs> just check it's all together. If I had any sign of elongation, so we haven't talked about the angle of the dangle. Yeah. Um, if there was any sign when I was lying on my front that my my foot was not plant flex, then I would I would seriously think about maybe even having surgery at that point. But I think because I know I would get Aquinas literally within ten seconds of that injury. Yeah. And I wouldn't leave it. Yeah. Then so if I, you I the think protocol, I would do well you do well. Well. and you'd be diligent yeah, yeah. with the protocol. And I think yeah. the same. And and therefore it is it, it is still my my default for any patient who comes to my clinic is to say treat it conservatively. Yeah. Unless they can either feel that they're only going to be reassured with surgery, which is a which is patient a fair preference. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've had that before. Yeah, yeah. I've had a patient who said, yeah. I am not, I'm not leaving until you stitch it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Because I can't imagine Charlie how, down the road had it done. I can't okay, imagine so how I'm, this will ever come yeah. together if you don't stitch it. Yeah. And I even I'm like, mate, it doesn't need stitching. He goes, no, yeah. and that was a high tear. I said, it doesn't need stitching. He goes, no, no, you just have to do it. Yeah. And then the minute you stitch it, he's back. His life is going on. It's everybody's different. Everyone's, different. everyone's different. And that's the whole thing. And that's why a protocol is not is yeah. a protocol is not the answer. No, no, no. A protocol is a guide. Yeah, yeah. To how to interpret that it. needs to be adapted. But you know, the protocol is not what to do with a lady who goes horse riding. No, no, no. You know who competitively horse rides, you know, yeah. I don't, we don't know what happens. No one really knows what happens, how involved the Achilles yeah, tendon yeah. is, you know, yeah. in that. We don't know. We yeah. might know what happens to joggers. We might know what happens to marathon runners, yeah, yeah. you know, maybe football players, but we don't really know what happens to horse No, no, it's very individual. Yeah, so yeah. we do have to think of it. Yeah.
cool. Okay, well, I think we've come to an end. Sam, Great thank honor. you Thanks very much. Chris, I really uh, really enjoyed, enjoyed the it. chat. Good luck with the squash game tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll go there. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And That's um fantastic. if anybody's got any questions, I'm sure both myself or Sam are more than happy yeah, to absolutely. answer it. Um, and um, thanks very much for hopefully getting to the end and listening to the whole thing. Thanks a lot. Cheers.